Hey, hi everyone. I'm doing the Cheesecake uh, subscription cooking with me. Okay. Boy, it looks like you have some yummy things going on there. Oh, wow. Hello, hello, everybody. How are you doing? Um, I hope you guys are doing great. I know there's some people that may be on that didn't want their video on. I don't know. But um, I got to put my apron on. I forgot. Okay. Well, we were just talking a little bit prior to this. We want to cater to you guys who are all the Cheesecake subscription members. And for today, is this time okay? Four to six, or it might be seven, your guys' time. Why don't we introduce each other? So Justine, I think we know who you are, but can you raise your hand? <laughs> all right. And uh, who is the other person? Looks like Laz. Go ahead. Well, do no. Do you know Lisa? Yes, Laz. Oh yeah. Hi, Laz. Hello. Hi. Okay, that's awesome. I'm so glad you guys are here. Well, um, Justine, how are you doing? <laughs> oh, there we go. I'm doing good, thank you. I'm doing really good. It's good to see you back from your getaway. Oh yeah, I just got back uh, late yesterday or whatever. So, you know, you get back and you just got to get on that treadmill again and keep going. Yeah. yeah I, um, I did make the chili for dinner tonight. So I made it a little bit earlier. And yeah, it was oh, very are you, good. Are you talking the, the, the red beans and rice? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. The chili. <laughs> no, the red beans and rice. Well, my husband called it soup. So I was like, I'm going to tell Amy you called it soup. <laughs> <laughs> well, I might have um, put a little too much broth in there, but uh, actually, I, think... I even I even added a little more, so it was okay. it was soupy, but it was really good. It was I don't normally make stuff like that, but um, I really enjoyed it. And what I did was I I put it in my little what is that called when it's like it's a crock pot and a steamer and all that all in one pressure it, pressure like, cooker. Yeah, it's all like kind of in it's one. The pot. So I, yeah, I cooked the, the rice first. Yeah. And then I took the rice out and then I did the rest of the stuff because I hate cleanup. So it was perfect. It was yeah. it was good. Yeah. Awesome. I enjoyed well, it. Well, good, good. I um so Laz and Justine and everybody else out there, uh, because if you're not on video, I can't see you. But um, oh hi Chris, you can say hi if you want. Um, I picked red beans and rice. No, on video, babe. Um, <laughs> because some of my kids don't eat a lot of meat. And so I wanted a recipe that was kind of like that. And also, you know, I get inspired. There he is, Chris. Hey, Chris. Hi. We're making red beans and rice. I like red beans and rice. But people don't have to add the meat, but we're going to add a little bit of the sausage that you took a little bit of today or at least a piece so <laughs> I saved some for the meal yeah. the bowl looks a little empty there Chris you might have hit it up Ooh, a few Daisy. times <laughs> there's Daisy see he loves his dog I tell you Daisy. Daisy. Well, she hangs around right by my feet almost the whole time when I'm cooking just waiting for something to drop off the counter and so she can gobble it up yeah, she's our kitchen vacuum cleaner. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, well, okay. I'm going to continue. But thank you, babe. Um, maybe you and I should cook a meal one day for this. Yes, that'd be yeah, awesome. That that would that that the that would be fun. Um, but anyway, and but I look at all these recipes either in magazines, online, everywhere, and recipes inspire me, give me ideas, or a variation of what I want to do with that particular recipe. And so, you know, I've been down to New Orleans, you know, so this reminded me of that. Then I, then you go down a rabbit hole. Well, what's the difference between Cajun and Creole seasonings and food wise? And I'm like, oh my gosh, it has something to do with, they like peppers or one of them likes the brown sauce or uh, the roux, the darkened roux, um, you know, a whole bunch of other stuff. So 
I don't like overly spicy meat. So that's why a lot of my recipes, I haven't really heard too much from people in the sense of it's too confusing, but this is a dinner recipe, very easy. And so if you don't like cayenne pepper, don't put it in. It, it's not gonna like destroy the recipe or the dish you're making. If you want some onion, but you don't want as much, but you know, green pepper. And the reason I picked onion, pepper and celery, just like what we do for our mirepaw, I think that's what it's called. I think we had a discussion on that before, mirepaw. We use carrots, celery and onions. Well, down in Louisiana or down south there, uh, especially a little more spicy Cajun, you know, this more or less traditional dish, their mirepaw is really celery, green pepper, and onion. Forget the carrots. But hey, if you want to add a carrot in here, feel free. So anyway, um, Laz, where are you from? I'm from... Um... What, what state do you live in or what city do you live in? Oh, he's muted right now. Oh, I see. He has I to unmute. Too sorry. Yeah. yeah. So Too sorry. Where, where do you live? Tucson. Tucson, Arizona. Oh, Tucson, Tucson. Oh, yeah, that's right, Lisa. You did say that. Tucson, Arizona. Well, yeah. hopefully some of these spices will be good for you because I know... Uh, the Hispanic community, community or the Mexican community has their own version of beans and rice too. When I got on to the show here, or you know, before the this live, um, I told them we're going to get going on the recipe. People don't have to cook with me if you want to, great. But I always try and do a recipe that is not going to take four hours. Who has four hours time? We don't. And so I'm just gonna finish chopping up my celery and my green pepper. I'm gonna get this going. I already made my rice and I already did the little sausage here. I went to my local meeting place and I did that. Because as I cook for you guys, guess what? This is gonna be my dinner tonight. <laughs> I do not have the resources or the time to make the same meal three different times like they sometimes do on a cooking show. So I'm just gonna finish cutting this up. But, so Tucson, it is really just a little after four your time. Justine, does this time work for you guys on the East Coast? I think it is. It's seven here, so it's not too bad. I figured when I, I made the recipe before, so this way I can kind of watch what you're doing too, and um, and I can still enjoy it. <laughs> well, I think the other thing we were thinking too, I mean, there's never going to be a perfect time. That is one thing Lisa and I have realized. There's never going to be a perfect time. So you just kind of pick a time and hopefully have a variety or a, a couple other times where other people can join in. Yeah, is that uh, even though you might have already eaten dinner, something else, maybe this is an idea for tomorrow night's dinner or, you know, another time. So the one thing I still have, I, I think one reason I love to, um, how, how should I say, wing it, wing it, wing it sounds like I don't even have a clue what I'm doing. But the one thing I like about winging it when I cook is because I can constantly have a visual, you know, as I cook. Where this, I'm already thinking, do I have enough rice? Maybe I have too many beans. I did say three cans of beans, so we'll see if I have to make any adjustments to this. Yeah, I kind of was thinking like when I did it, I didn't have green pepper, so I used red pepper, which was fine. Yep. And then um, when I saw the three cans of beans, I was like, that's a lot of beans. So I, I think, I might do two in next time I make it. Well, one of the but, reasons I did three is because your main thing is red beans and then the rice. That's, well, oh, I added people. sausage. Oh yeah, sausage. Now Chris would have, Chris would want a lot more beans and sausage than he would the rice. Because <laughs> he's like, Amy, sometimes, and it's true, I, I overthink it. Or here's a, a cup of, you know, one cup of dry rice. Well, that's not going to be enough. 
Then I'm oh, adding right. a little bit more and suddenly I got five cups of rice and I'm like, oh. <laughs> the rice grows like quadruple. <laughs> or the same with pasta. I've done that with pasta before. Yeah. <laughs> you know, with my lasagna soup. And I'm like, Amy, get with it. it it's I think I get so paranoid and I say, and I tell everyone on this. So you guys, um, when I make the recipe, because I've made this kind of dinner multiple times, I just get a little bit anxious when I'm writing up the recipe and paranoid as to, oh my God, did I do something wrong? Or did I not have <laughs> enough? Or I don't know. Hey, it looks like we have another person joining us here pretty quick. Oh, great. Hey. Well, at least by video, hopefully. <laughs> um, yeah, we're still trying to work out our subscription thing. But okay, we're going to go with Laz. Laz, do you have any questions? Anything you want to ask or? Um, how long have you been doing um, your? show on call will be a big road for okay for our show we just Good ended question. our 24th season i mean year when we first started this whole thing i thought we would not go past two seasons so we started this in my book back in 2004 it became a series or whatever you want to call it in 2006 and we've been going ever since so we just ended our 24th season. I'm hoping that we do 25 because 25 just sounds really cool when you say, yeah, we did 25 seasons. So keep an eye out, you know, if you follow TLC or see, you know, in the news or some of those, you know, gossip things or whatever. Um, you know, if we got more coming out, but I think so, but I never know for sure. So I'm going to get my pot over here going. Okay. I got oil in it. It looks like oh. someone named Rochelle just joined us. Oh, yeah. Hey. Hi, Rochelle. Hey, um, how's it going? <laughs> oh, good. See, okay. Everyone else that's out there in video land, but not on video, feel free <laughs> to voice your thoughts and opinions here. Um, so I'm glad that, you know, people can talk. Uh, yeah. Okay. For an example, what we were talking about. Okay, my pot is already in the sink, but I cooked the sausage in one pot thinking, great, you know, all the flavor from the sausage, I'll take the sausage out, I'll cook my onions and green pepper, but then I'm thinking, <laughs> well, Amy, you got to add the beans in there. Oh, by the way, besides the beans, you got to add the rice in there. Oh, besides the rice, you actually got to put the sausage back in that pot. And I'm looking at the pot thinking, oh, brother, this is not big enough. So... I had to go to the bigger pot. So, anyway. yeah. but no, that, that, uh, that's a great question. In fact, um, um, just coming back from Michigan and everything, I'm trying to get back in the swing of things. So I just found out I may be watching a couple of my grandkids for the weekend, oh. but the other grandmother is going to take the baby or what well, it's one years old. It's like, no, oh my gosh already 14 months old uh but she's going to take that but i'm like oh the weekend i'll be able to do that i can i can watch all three of them for the weekend but the older ones are very much into play you know they, they want to run all over the place well you can't really do that if you're watching a baby so i'm hoping why i brought that up i'm not sure but i'm hoping to cook with them i don't get an opportunity to cook with my grandkids very much so I'm, I'm hoping to do that, but um, okay. Any other question? Cause I want, I don't want to just talk about me, but I will <laughs> if you want. But if you guys have any questions or any thoughts or anything like that, let me know. This is a new, you guys are our cheesecake membership. So I really want to cater to you guys and what you're looking for, what your expectations are and just some of the conversations we'll have. Uh, we're already trying to pick some dates where it may not be cooking, but we just talk about a subject or a thought or something like that. Um, 
because it's a lot different when you're in person, but when you're just on video, you got to talk about something. Okay, I'm going to add this stuff. I'm going to start cooking here. I'm just going to be over here, but I can still hear you. All right. Now, nor now, normally I'd probably just cook the onions first, but um, for the sake of time, we're doing it all at once. When I hear it start sizzling, I'll know I'll have to go back and stir it a little bit, and hopefully it hasn't um, burnt on the pan yet. <laughs> I don't have multiple cameras here, you know, to do everything, so I'm just going to slice up my garlic and mince it, chop it up. Now, Laz, do you cook for yourself or what are some of your favorite things that you like to eat? Um, I like to eat like hamburgers, um, pizza, and and um, I'm starting to learn how to cook on my own so I can, because I'm starting up a, a um, cooking channel on my YouTube channel right now. And I'm wearing some, I'm trying to wear some, some make on my YouTube channel and stuff, so. Yeah, I think the best way to, you know, do something like that maybe for you is just to write down a recipe that you really like or something like that. Or, um, and then just really let your audience know I'm learning to cook, so why don't you learn with me? And so some of the recipes that I have are, are very, very doable. You know, just print it out, go for it, stuff like that. Okay. Because that's, that's really how I learned how to cook back in the day when I was younger than you, but now I'm much older than you. Um, was just look magazines, just look through cookbook, cookbooks, and, you know, just, just do something like just cook with me. Yeah, that sounds like fun having your own channel. I know it is. I've been doing, I've been posting all my videos on there. I think I have like four hundred videos on there so far. Wow. wow. Yeah. Well, you must have the time to do all those videos. I do. I unfortunately, you know, um, Lisa and I, and I'm sure Justine and everybody else, you know, when you have other jobs to do. Yeah. I haven't gotten to the point where I can just make a living off of just doing videos, except yeah. for my TV show. <laughs> Is that a video? <laughs> so anyway. Uh, yeah, I think so there, Amy. <laughs> yeah. So Justine, did you actually eat this recipe yet? Or you know, eat this recipe? I, mean, I like, did. Taste it, have a bite or whatever. Yeah, I did. I did. And actually, Kevin, I'm going to call him in here and Put them on the spot. Did you um, add more spices or was it good or what would you change? He has a taste tester coming to tell I us. Am, right I now. do. Tell Amy how you liked it. Come in. He's embarrassed. My husband's never embarrassed. No, embarrassed. <laughs> come on in. We, you know what? Come on in. We want to meet your like husband. Every other guy who are the doing the picture of our thing. And for other people, it's like, that's for you. Hi. Hi. So she wants to know how you like the uh the I like the soup. That was good. Did you? Okay, good. Good. Bean soup, bean and it's sauce. Well, it's red beans and rice. It may seem like soup, but yeah, it was like soup because there was no rice in there. Did well, you guys... the rice oh, okay. was on the side, and I told him you have to put the rice in it. Did yeah. you say hi to Ozzy? <laughs> yeah. Hi, Ozzy. Oh, our youngest, like Daisy, this is our youngest baby. boy. Okay, we're done. No, no, that's okay. <laughs> trying to get me to go away, but I'm not going to. Oh, good. Just good. kidding. Let Bye. him stay. Let him stay. <laughs> um, well, I'll tell you the truth, Justine. Uh, Chris would like or mention that I should make a change in this. Now, I, again, I have, um, You know, I, I don't do, you know, Creole uh, cooking or Cajun cooking a lot. I don't live down South, obviously, or any of that. But as I was reading on multiple sites, 
there is a debate between Cajun cooking and Crayola cooking. Do you make the beans and everything, cook the rice within all of that? And then there's another section that, no, you don't. You put the beans, bean mixture, you know, what you created here, over the rice. Oh. And so, um, but I think I'm going to make one little change in here. You can do it either way. I still cook the rice separately because I haven't made the recipe this often enough to, if you cook the rice within it, it takes up a lot of liquid, but how much liquid is that? So if you uh, put the rice within the beans after you're all done cooking everything and cook it for about 10 minutes or something longer so everything melts together, the rice will, the rice will continue to soak up the liquid. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, I have a comment. Yeah. So um, my, my husband's from the Caribbean. And so we make, we call it rice and peas and it's rice with kidney beans cooked in coconut milk. Ooh. And you put the same amount of liquid as you would just making regular rice and you mix it, you do it with coconut milk instead and mix the beans in and it cooks all together in one pot. So that's kind of like you're saying, there's so many different ways of cooking it, but there's different is, variations. Yeah. But it, and it's more of just a rice dish with red kidney beans in it but this is so versatile like I think Justine you said you added a little more liquid to yours to kind of make it a little more soupy is that what you it's not on purpose <laughs> oh not, not on, on purpose no um but I did use um red pepper because I didn't have green pepper and I prefer red actually better and um I, it probably changed it a little bit but I don't think that much no but actually when I was reading it though I was like well I wasn't sure whether to drain the beans or not. And I okay, did. That I drained. Is, it, it's so funny. Here, here's my little thing. I'm going to correct this and send it back out. Because, you know, when, when you're typing up like five mm -hmm. recipes at a time, I'm like, okay. <laughs> they don't know you're doing that. <laughs> I do know. So when I look back at my <laughs> recipe, I'm like, I because I looked at this and I'm like, okay, three cans of red beans. Okay. Drain. I would, I would assume you just pour the whole can in there, but I put in here drain. I, that's what I thought. I thought I don't. I usually don't wash. The only thing I'll wash no, I don't, yeah. is uh, maybe quinoa, or uh, um, I know there's other things, maybe rice or no, there's something else you wash. I can't remember. Anyway, um, I usually don't wash my beans or anything because canned beans these are kind of already cooked. And I'd rather go canned beans over dry beans because it just takes so long to have, soak them overnight and all this other stuff. So um, I, I just use canned, but I did drain these. So thank you for noticing that because I did, but it's like, this is what they got. <laughs> it was yummy. It was yummy. Good. It was good. So I'm trying to think. And I put basically all the same spices in um you did yeah I'm gonna add my garlic now so Laz you can see we're having fun here right it's not yeah, just are. all just cooking like follow the recipe we like to have fun and talk about things and yeah you do, do. You, yeah do well, you have I any other like, I I want to feel for everyone that's on um as if you're just sitting around my table I may be cooking it but we can talk about anything. We can, you know, if I was here, those that do do it, it's like, oh yeah, hey, keep yourself entertained. You want a glass of wine? <laughs> <laughs> do you have I any love other it. I love it that you do that. Yeah. And so I debated here because I don't want it overly tomatoey. But you know, usually mm -hmm. a can of tomato paste is six ounces. A tube is four and a half. But mm -hmm. I in my recipe, I said, okay, three tablespoons of potato paste, tomato paste. <laughs> can is a lot cheaper than one of those tube things. Uh, and so I'm like, do I just use this whole thing? But because I cook often enough, I will use the other three ounces or approximate or whatever um, soon enough. 
but parts of me would just oh just add the whole thing but it will create an overly more to yes. me than i would yeah have. So i'm gonna get a spoon here hey i had a question from um joyce parsons she wanted to know what you're doing for valentine's day if you're cooking for chris you know and what i'm thinking yeah, I'm thinking about that right now because the poor guy, he doesn't like chocolate cake or things like that. I don't know why I, oops, I stuck my thumb in the tomato paste. Uh -oh. I don't, um, I can never remember, well, what chocolate do you like? Uh, so I'm, I'm like coming, I'm trying to think like, what, what do I do? I, I don't know what to do. And a dessert wise and everything. So I have to think of that. I don't think he's going to like panna cotta. I, I think, you know, for a guy. Really? Like it's so good. So I'm still trying to perfect my, perfect my cherry pie. I'm so mad because I made cherry pie and it turned out great twice. The other times I'm like, okay, it gelled up way too much. I don't need a jelly cherry pie. Then the liquid was too much. And I'm like, well, didn't I just add what I did? To, oh, it's so complicated. And so what I may do is he heard me put chocolate because you put cocoa powder in all of it stuff. So what I may do is maybe make a something like red velvet cake or something like that. I might try and do like a red velvet roll. You know, you roll up the sponge cake and- Yes, I would love to see that. The frosting in it and stuff and maybe do something like that. Uh, that might be a fun Valentine's thing to do. Chris is very much a steak and potato guy. So um, we, I made this one dish. I wanna make the true French demi-glace demi uh, steak, but there's a process of making that. Okay, so I may go ahead and make steak with a demi-glace. Demi I'm probably not even pronouncing it right. Whoever knows French is like, oh brothers. And so um, I may go ahead and do that. That might be fun. Potatoes, I might do a potatoes, you know, like roasted potatoes, just do the traditional. And Chris is a very simple eater, but I tell you, he likes everything that I do. Thank God. So those sound delicious, that the roll cake for sure. And then doing, uh, you said steak and potatoes. Any kind of like I might do a steak and do a demi glaze sauce yeah. over it, which yes. is a very nice sauce, but it's a process to make. Or I it's been eons since I, I remember back in the day I made the steak Diane. I might do that. I just wanted to do something different than with your garlic butter or your butter and mm -hmm. uh, uh, blue cheese. Uh, you know, over steak or, you know, something of that sort. Cool. I made, uh, we had steak a couple nights ago and we had some leftovers. So I made a steak salad last night and sliced up pieces of steak and then used some blue cheese dressing and drizzled over that. Oh my gosh, that was so easy. And it was and I sliced up some tomatoes and cucumber and put on there too. It was really good. Okay, I'm trying to do what my thing said. So I will, I add everything. Yep. Are you sure? Amy, what's your favorite um, cooking show to watch? Oh my God. You know what? I wish the Food Channel and stuff like that did more, put more of the shows on, like when you watch the Food Network and stuff, when you don't have to be a member of, Discovery Channel. I wish that they would have more of the shows of chefs cooking instead of all of the food competition. Yeah. But the only reason a network really does that is because a lot of people like that. Yeah. And sometimes you can get wonderful ideas from those that have on the spot come up with a recipe or something. Uh, but you, a lot of those shows you have uh, those that are already chefs. They already know what they're doing. I think, I watched this a couple of times. 
the worst cook in America. <laughs> what? Yeah. I've not seen that. Uh, this is with Ann Burnell. She's a chef, you know, part of the Food Network. And she has changed the person that's with her every season, I think. I think. Don't mark, don't get me wrong. But half of these people, I'm like, do you really not know how to cook? Or you're just like, this is TV. Come on. It changes people. Believe me. Oh. Changes, you know, when they go into, because I, I would be laughing. So I, I, you've got to be kidding me. Like, even if you've never cooked before, this is like so basic. But anyway, so worst cook in America is kind of fun. Because okay. I've been on the chop show before. Yeah. Um, yeah, she did. Chop. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, oh yeah. I, I will tell you this, everyone. It is, I have never been so tense, so nerve wracking, so everything. Um, hang on, let me check this for a second. Yeah, she can go into it further, but she she did a great job. You know, Amy's her worst critic, right? Her worst mm -hmm. critic. And she was awesome, awesome. Aww. She she went up against one of the guys from The Deadliest Catch, the show The Deadliest Catch. And our Catch. main thing was lobster. I'm yeah. like, really? So the guy knew, and he was the chef on the boat, one of the chefs on the boat. So he, yeah, and then it was lobster, so. Oh, man. He came I'll in go that in my, um, spices here real quick. Yeah, she came in second, so so awesome she if she she was like one point away she would have won the whole thing and it was for charity so that was very cool too that's cool yeah. well, i think if i was um i'm gonna do the exact amount that i told you all on this <laughs> um because i i gotta see if i need change this i think again one of those things is i'm writing up this recipe the amount of um liquid may have took part in because my mind was do I cook the rice do I not do I cook do I cook the rice with the beans and everything or don't I but you know I forgot to change the liquid element <laughs> I'm an That's easy peasy type of girl I like easy recipes that just one one pot <laughs> yeah me too <laughs> Well, if it if it does become more involved, that when you read a recipe, then you have to have the mindset, this is going to take me a little more time. So I can't just make it tonight, but it's a good recipe. I'll plan on making it two days from now. So we're just going to let this cook for a minute. And usually I don't, um, usually you've got to salt your food, but you've got to be very careful with that, depending on what else you're putting with it. So since I am adding sausage to this, I want to be careful that I don't over salt it. Let's wait till the food kind of melts with the sausage to see if any more salt is needed. Yeah, I have to be careful with that. I think that's one of the reasons why I really started enjoying cooking. And even when you use the canned beans, now I'm not sure if the red kidney beans came in a can of low sodium, but most of like my broth here is less sodium. Um, sometimes you can get no sodium, but sometimes that's very hard to find. But usually my beans and everything, I I get low sodium so I figured you know every little bit helps and stuff so anyway okay should I add this yes I'm gonna add the beans so Justine I could see where your husband thought this was soup <laughs> <laughs> and that is because because I'm like soup no, it shouldn't be that runny. It shouldn't be like soup. So, I, I mean, it's probably, that's why, you know, like I said, I, I write up so many recipes that mm -hmm. I, I, yeah, I'll have, because I'd rather cook the rice ahead of time. You, you can just 
you know, you want more rice, you don't, and you can just add the amount of rice you want to, to the beans and all this other stuff. I can't hear you, Lisa. All you have to do is call it red beans and rice soup. Mm. Then. I know. And there yeah. you go. Yeah. That's the, that's the recipe. I, I know. Love it. See, everybody agrees. But those that are really recipe followers, then that's what I would have to call it. But when you say red beans and rice, that comes up for most people. If you've had it at all at a restaurant or something like that, there's an image that comes up in your mind. And when you make someone else's recipe and it changes that image completely, they're like, what? Doesn't this person know <laughs> what they're doing? That's what I thought. Like I, I was thinking of, I thought it was going to be a lot like a thicker and um, yeah. So yeah. But by talking with you and, and, and seeing, you know, some other notes and everything, and just by Chris mentioning that to me, it's like, I bet you that's what I thought. Cause the three cups of broth yeah. is added because you don't want it so dry, but is was there because I went back and forth deciding what did I want to do? Do I cook the rice with the beans and stuff or do I not? And so yeah. before this gets published or we'll resend it to all of you cheesecake, um, you know, members and stuff like that. So you'll get a new tweet recipe and uh, stuff like that, because, you know, it's, yeah, so hopefully we've sent those out to people when I mentioned that we yeah. were. Um, but anyway, I know um, <clears throat> Laz had talked about he had 400 videos out there. That's very cool. And yeah. uh, looks like on YouTube you do. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, just wanted to also say, Amy, we just hit 100,000 subscribers on our YouTube. Oh, that's so awesome. I have to order you a plaque that's going to oh, be gosh. coming. Would you like silver or gold? I think I know what you want, but <laughs> in my I house, know what gold. I would like. You gold. want gold? Well, in my house, gold. Why? You <laughs> thought silver? No, I thought you would want, because see, Amy always is the opposite. There's always something when yeah. I like something, then she'll do the opposite. Or sometimes she'll want the same thing. And so like we- And I'll say, Lisa, thing. you can't have it. No, she'll say, I want that. And- we have the same sweater in the next live we're going to do, or the next few lives, we're probably going to wear that same sweater because we bought them together. We always buy stuff together. Yeah. That's me and my best friend too. She loves going to Disney and dressing up, or if we go to scrapbooking events, we always have the same shirts. And... Yeah. <laughs> it's awesome. It's fun. It's fun. Yeah. Um, 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 Lisa is not in the States right now. She's, she's, she's out of town, but you know, we can do anything. It. We can do anything on, on, you know, via the internet. Yeah. So I have always liked the circus since I've been a kid have always liked the circus. I like circus clowns and everything, Hollywood and everyone else who ever totally destroyed Totally to the max. They they went beyond steroids on that one. It's destroyed the image of clowns. And but I I have always liked clowns because to me, no matter what they're going through, they always want to make people happy. And so they're fun. They're bright clothing and you know with the makeup on and everything. They've got smiles. And um, I haven't really reached out to them in a long time. But we do have someone here that is really big on the whole clowning thing here in the Portland area. Angel, is it Angel Casillo or something? Yes, like that? Angel of Casillo. Anyway, they yeah. do the Portland Rose Parade and stuff like that. Uh, the whole point to all of this is that we have Cir Circus de Soleil, however you French- Cirque word. de Soleil. Cir circuit, Cirque, what? Cirque de Soleil. Cirque, Circus de Soleil? Sure. Mm -hmm. Sure. How can it be dirt? It's D E. <laughs> Cirque de Soleil. Oh, Cirque, Cirque de Soleil. I don't know. Anyway. Say Parmesan cheese three times. <laughs> but I, I was like, who's going to want to go with me? Um, I didn't. Chris wants to go. I was yeah. so shocked because I didn't think he liked all that, you know, because they're not really singing really, but it's music and you know, all this other stuff, but he goes, yeah. I'm like, I just assumed because, and it just reminded me 
See, those are things we can talk about relationships. Don't ever assume because then you've taken that yeah. element away from someone in having them decide because maybe they're in the mood to do it. Maybe they're not. So hey, is that I this talk? He goes, yeah, I'd like to go. And I'm like, really? I never thought you would like to go to that. But he goes, yeah, with all that acrobats and, you know, that's just amazing, you know, what people can do. I'm like, I was so excited. I tell you, I was so, so excited because I thought, well, great. Mm. And so I asked Lisa and Art, I said, well, <laughs> you're going to be just coming home. Are you guys in the mood to go? So yes. I said, yes. If not, you'll have to give your tickets away. But no, we're going. we're going. We want to go. I love that. And we don't do a lot. We do a lot together without doing a lot of fun stuff together, without being a part of all the stuff we do do together. <laughs> so anyway, I think that's funny. Yeah, I was trying to find some pictures of Amy. We actually took her out for her birthday uh has to be at least five years ago but um it's gotta be we more took than to, five years ago we took you to the circus i know it's it like it was a long time ago cadence was little so it yes yeah i'm thinking 2010 rochelle i'm trying to find pictures i bet i can find them yes and we all dressed up and so it was really fun we dressed up amy was in a clown outfit and it was great <laughs> Yeah, Lisa, so look at anyway. your text message. Okay. So that'll be the other thing. Oh, we could have a whole discussion. What in your life have you always loved or liked? And you went and saw a movie and it either totally destroyed it or you got mad at the entity that destroyed the image for everyone else except yourself. To me, it would be clowns. <laughs> Hollywood, I don't go to any of your movies where there's a clown in it that you have so ruined. No, Even Batman, they made it scary. No, no, they not only made it scary, but they made them mean and horrible and just yuck. Remember Batman? <laughs> Unfortunately, that actor died. It was the Joker. Yeah, he was the Joker in it. He, um, he was remember. always bad. I can't remember what his name was. He played on the, on the, um, oh my God. Cesar Romero? No, the his, Batman his, show his the first movie. name was he. Uh, oh, he played on the night. Oh gosh. Oh, it was a medieval oh, thing. It was really fun. The nights. Uh, oh, the good well, night. The, the, newer, anyway. the younger kid that passed away, right? Heath, Heath uh, Ledger. Yes, Heath Ledger. Keith Ledger. And um, well, he was the Joker in that, but it's like, no, you you just, oh man, you made it so mean. Because I did clowning just for a brief second when I was in high school and a little bit of my first year in college, because it was either more on the faith-based clowning, you know, and stuff like that. I, I supported uh, clowns uh, across the border or something like that. So there's a whole troop that goes overseas and, you know, just to add a little fun and that kind of element to kids and families and kids that are facing so much. So. Yeah. Hollywood you ruined it. So anyway, what has been your favorite movies either on Netflix or any of the streaming, or if you went to the theater, what is one show that you're really into? Anybody? Viking. Mine, oh, uh, mine, sorry. Mine's um, Venom. What is it? Um, Venom. Venom? Oh, Venom? Yeah. Like Venom with a V. Yeah. Less. Is it that scary? kind of scary. It is. Is, is it scary? It is um, kind of scary a little bit. Um, yeah. it, it's kind of like a Marvel movie. Oh, oh Marvel okay. movie. Okay, got it. Oh, yeah. Is it a Marvel character? Yeah. Okay. Oh. I think I remember that now. Yeah. I, unfortunately, am getting older. 
my tolerance level for those very intense, scary movies has become lower. Like you can't have too much in it anymore because I'm like, okay, you have just exhausted me. <laughs> what about you, Justine? So on uh, the Viking, I, I was gonna say um, for some reason, is it the Viking? No, the last kingdom, I'm sorry. Oh yes. For, for, I don't know why, but I've never watched a series over as many times as I have for that with that. Really? Okay. Yeah. I like, I think I've watched it three times and I don't okay, know why. I might but... have to check that out then. What, yeah. does, what streaming is it on? It's on Netflix. Wait, I think it's Netflix. Wait, ne ne either Prime oh, or Netflix. Netflix. Yeah, our main things are, um, I don't know, I got to figure out my Discovery Plus. For some reason, I can't get into it. Um, She's on it, but she can't fight, get into it. <laughs> no, I added in my email. I added in my Discovery Plus. <laughs> added in my email. Added in my password. I couldn't get on it via my computer. And so I'm like, what? So anyway, I'll have to figure that out because no, that's no. what my show is. And but I just... I was just watching Dead to Me, Dead to Me was it? Oh, Dead and, to uh, Me. Oh, I know that show. I haven't watched it. What is it? Oh, listen, it is bizarre. Isn't it a little bizarre, Justine? First I was like, what? But then I was like, this is like crazy. Like I thought it was very creative, like very like, cause it kept it, like I laughed and I, I yeah. and yes. the ending was crazy because yes. yeah, I don't want to say it because I don't want to tell Lisa, but. Or um, anybody else that's watching, but yeah. Oh, you're watching. Oh so, yeah. Like um, the way it ended was like crazy. Yeah. Like I was like, ah. It, but, it um, that was kind of a six series or eight episode series. I don't know what it was. Yeah, I think two or three seasons. Or maybe four. Yeah, yeah so oh, two or three seasons. Was yeah. it seasons? I thought it was just episodes. Was I it actually it was, seasons? I thought it was seasons. I can't seasons, remember. What's it it's called? Dead to Me. It's with oh. Christina Applegate. Yes. You no, know, she's been on the news, unfortunately, because she's dealing with MS. Oh, yeah. I was wondering. Oh, okay. But anyway, yeah. but see, this is the conversations you would have with anyone. If you're gathering around the table with your family or friends or a glass of wine, someone just made the meal and, you know, you're talking about life and things like that, but we're just on this role of television shows and, you know, things like that. I was very shocked to hear about Lisa Marie. Oh, yeah. Lisa Marie Presley. I was like, what in the world? I, it, to me, that was such a tragedy. You know, that whole family. Actually, I, don't, I don't know how she passed. I know she did, but how did she pass? I, they haven't Heart. Really come out and said. Heart failure. Well, I think that's what they're indicating is heart failure. Yeah. Heart failure. I heard a snippet on, because I watched all those. I don't know why I feel I felt always connected to her, maybe just my name, the era, we're all born kind of in that same. Yeah. She's a little bit younger, but her, one of her kids had mentioned she knew her time was near. Yeah. So she, she must have had some kind of illness or something. Well, I think heart failure or heart attack or whatever do, does run in her family. Yes, because of Elvis. Well, obviously we know Elvis was, you know, taking, was on a lot of medication or taking some drugs. And obviously if you already have a heart issue, that'll impact it. But I think also his dad or his mom also died from it. Mom, mom. And I'm just so sad because I had forgotten that her only son committed suicide mm -hmm. and her oldest daughter is old enough, but her two younger daughters, you know, will now grow up without a mom. And it kind of reminds me of my daughter-in-law, Isabel, who her mom passed away. You know, she was ill for a couple of years, but her mom, yeah. died when she was like 15 years old and sometimes that was tough the world, that is really impactful, you know? So mm -hmm. anyway, hopefully yeah. none of you guys have really encountered, how should I say, I look at it more like an early passing. Meaning like, uh, you know, it'll be sad when my dad passes away, 
but how can I be so sad to the fact that you live to 95, 96, 97, 98, however it may be. Your I dad's going to be over a life, you yeah. know? But if someone yeah. dies at 65 or in their late 50s or something like that, you're like, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. Like what? You just yeah. have your head wrapped around someone passing away that early. I know. Well, that kind of brings us to another question. Carol Burrell asked, how was your time in Michigan? So when she comes back, she can. You know, I think, you know, I love going back home because it is, you know, obviously I'm probably older. Hi. Hi, Amanda. Welcome. Um, we're just, someone had asked the question about how my time was in, in Michigan. Um, you know, the older you get, you don't mind just being in the same room with someone and doing nothing. You know, so my dad was reading the newspaper. He's, you know, he's going to be 90. He just turned 94. But my dad says, well, I'm in my 95th year. And I'm like, okay. Uh, we're, just, we're, we're just so thankful that you made it to 94. Anyway, uh, but he was reading the newspaper and I was reading the book or book and everything. And I think for me, what makes that so special is because I left Michigan. I tell everyone this. I feel like I'm on record, recorded. Anyway, I I I I didn't live in Michigan as an adult. You know, I left what two years, eighteen months, or whatever it was after I graduated from college. So I don't really know my parents as adults. But just to be in that same room, he's sitting in the chair, he's reading his newspaper, and. You know, I'm reading my book and everything. And sometimes he'll say, hey, I just, you know, can you believe or whatever thing he read in the paper or something like that? I'm like, this is just so cool. Like, sometimes we often feel like when we go on vacation like because of the money involved, because of the limited time you have, or when we go and visit friends or something like that, it's like, you want to cram all of this stuff in but you never gave the time, at least for a couple hours or a day, just to be in their presence, just to enjoy their company, just to talk about nothing, but yet it feels like everything. So yeah. to me, that is really what I enjoy. Uh, my brother was there, he flew in from Colorado. So he and I, I pretty much tagged on with him. He's gone out there more often during this time than I have because he married late. He has kids later in life. And, you know, I had four kids running all over the place. I don't think Matt would have handled me leaving for five days, taking care of four <laughs> young kids. Maybe, maybe you should have tried that. No, he, he would have had a team. I've been, I've done that. A couple <laughs> yeah. Times. He would have had a team all set. I come home was... and I'm like, so how'd it go? Oh yeah. You know, he came over or she stopped by, you know, or whoever friend or friend that we knew or something meal here, meal here, or, we went out to dinner and I'm like, so you actually had a party when I was gone. So when I come back home to the discipline and we got to get up for school and all they look at mom, like, why'd you come back? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I'm sorry. Is it Liz that just came on here? Amanda. Amanda, Amanda. Sorry about that, Amanda. I apologize. Amanda, where are you from? Oh, she's on mute. Hang on. I can't hear you. She has to unmute. It should be on the lower bottom. Unmute. Naveed, can you unmute her? Our producer might be able to unmute she her. Might be there on she the phone. Okay. okay can we you hear me? Yes. Okay. I actually, I am originally from New Jersey. Um, I lived in South Carolina and I moved to Forest Grove, Oregon um, right before COVID. So it's been an interesting time to live in a new area. So you're like our neighbor. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Well, I can only imagine because I still think it's completely different here. I've lived out West in the Pacific North Northwest, the majority of my adult life. I still love going back to the Midwest, you know, Michigan, yeah. you know, um, and obviously you moved during COVID and everything. How has it been now that we're a year out of COVID or we can get out and everything? 
just the cultural or just the different parts of the country? How, how has it been going for you? Um, I think Oregon is probably one of the most visually stimulating places I've ever lived. Like it's absolutely beautiful and living in New Jersey where you don't have a landscape like that. You got the ocean. Things, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> some of the things that I see just absolutely blow my mind, you know, the waterfalls and that sort of thing. Whereas I grew up right outside of New York city. So it was very different. Oh no, no. Um, yeah. Yeah. So it's culturally it's very different the food is very different there's a lot of foods that i miss from back east where um there's a lot of um like a lot of towns are separated by neighborhoods like you'll have an italian neighborhood or a polish neighborhood and the jewish neighborhood you could go to those regions and get very specific food whereas here i miss a lot of that of the food aspect from the east coast versus the west coast is very different Oh, I, I could so, so see that because mm, yeah. near Detroit, you know, we had Eastern Market and we had this and we had this. And, you know, even in the black community, they have a different flair to their cooking and everything, yeah. you know, um, whether people don't really realize this, but Dearborn has one of the highest Muslim population yes. in the country. And so, you know, that adds a different element to the food cuisine and just culturally overall. How, how long did you live in South Carolina? Um, for about seven years. Oh, wow. Yeah, so my how husband- that from Jersey, New York to South Carolina? Well, I lived in Virginia for a bit. My husband's retired Navy, so we kind of oh, bounced oh. around up and down the East Coast. But okay. Virginia is more of a melting pot more like the north is whereas south carolina is um i mean there's nothing like southern food <laughs> southern cook true southern cooking you know it's amazing i mean it's not the friendliest for our pants but yeah. it tastes good well that's why i did <laughs> rice and beans i was trying to combine that whole louisiana and yeah everything else but yeah whatever so good wow. delicious what made you move to, to the Pacific Northwest? Is your husband still in the Navy or you just decided or what, what happened? No, he, so this is funny. So he, um, when he, he retired from the Navy when we were in Virginia and he got his first civilian job in South Carolina, but where we lived in South Carolina was very, um, uh, a lot of service industry, like right outside of Hilton Head. Sure. Like right there yeah. by Savannah. So it was a, a very touristy industry, but not for what he did. So he commuted two hours each way to Charleston every week. Wow. And then, yes. So that got to be a lot. So then he got a job with like a small software solutions company in town that opened up, but then they went under. So it's like, oh, let's, he's originally from Southern Oregon. So it's like, let's take a leap oh, of faith. Okay. That is yes. the, okay. That is the connection. Yeah. Yes. So he, so it's like, let's try this. I didn't necessarily want to go back to where I was already at because I'm nosy and want to see all the places and so we uh, we came here and it's been it's been an adventure. Do you have any kids? I have four kids and two grandkids. Oh my gosh! What? You're the most old enough yes. to have two grandkids. Yeah. <laughs> no way. You 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 could be my best friend now for saying that, but thank you. I have two. I have a daughter who's twenty eight. I have a daughter who's twenty two. I have a son, a daughter who's twelve, a son who's about to be eleven, and then my grandkids are three and ten months. Wow. And they all fought the older ones followed me here. It's like they all came out to yeah. with mom. So I have everybody in one area now. What do you do for a living or are you still working or what? I do. I work from home. I work for um, Global Exports. Um, I work for uh, Thermo Fisher Scientific, which is local to here, but I work uh -huh. at home from my house. So, yeah. Okay. This is what, the, the, this is where the older you get, sometimes you can't multitask. I was going <laughs> to do fresh parsley and just garnish it, but I chopped it up right here and into the soup. <laughs> well, now you got me on the soup, Justine. So um, you got to change the name of it. So beans and rice it. soup. That's it. No. That's what nice. we're calling no, it. Rice and beans. I'll show it to you. No. But I'm going to clarify. We voted you out, Amy. You're yeah. <laughs> what? 
<laughs> we voted it out. We already said that it has to change. <laughs> well, since I'm going to change some elements on this, well, um, Amanda, yep. we, we've got some other people joining video. I'm not sure if you can see them or not. Laz yes. and Justine, and we've got a number of people that, for whatever reason, aren't on video, but we can hear them talk if they voice up. So Rochelle and whoever else, feel free to ask yeah. a question or anything. Um, so, I, I guess the thing I would like to ask you, Amanda, because I, I already know a little bit from Justine already, is um, I'm assuming you follow me in general. Yes. Okay. And, um, you know, the, the whole subscription thing is new to me and, you know, my team a little bit. So, you know, we're, we're, we're just giving people a heads up. We'll, we'll get better and better as time goes on. Uh, but feel free, whether it here or email me, what you expect or what you would like to see through that membership of the list that we had, or should we think about something else? Cause I really want to make this a part of you. It, it's, I just don't want to be this flat screen where like I'm doing everything, meaning talking or God knows what, but I'd like, you know, as if you guys were sitting around my table and we're just chit chatting. So feel free to voice up, uh, offer any thoughts or any questions you want to ask me. And it doesn't have to always be about the show. It can be any element of the show. It can be before the show, after the show, during the show, whatever it may be, or just life in general. So anyway, I just want to say that as, you know, so many people keep coming on that are new. Yeah. Uh, are you glad that your older daughter moved out here? Because I'm assuming she's the one that has the grandkids. No, it's the middle daughter. The 22 year old? <laughs> <laughs> she was 23, 23, 23. Oh, she's, Amy, yeah, 23. Amy, your kids got married young too. What are you talking you. about? Well, not everyone has to be married either. Well, um, I don't yeah. mean married, just married, but just having kids. Yeah. No, it, it is true. My, my, you know, even my boys, um, 2000, I think Jared and Oz got married in 2014. Boy, it's going to be nine years for them. Wow. And um, so, yeah, I think he was like, he might've just turned 24. No, nine years, 24. He's going to be 33. Yes. He just turned 24 and he got married that September. Audrey was 23, similar to Zach and Tori. Yes. That's then, what I'm saying. They all got married young. Yeah. Even Molly. Or had kids. All yeah. my kid, well, Jacob really got married young. He was with somebody. He, he, he was my youngest. My youngest was my youngest. <laughs> I'm doing, he's, he just turned 26 and they have a son. Uh, oh, nice. Even Molly, she'll, this will be six, I think, her sixth year. Uh, yeah, she got, oh my God, God, now that I think about it, all my kids got married at the same time, age wise, age wise. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I couldn't imagine not, I, I'm so happy that they all did come to this side. I would be, um, I mean, you love your kids, right? But then you get these grandkids, you know, and it just takes your breath away. And yeah. I just couldn't imagine not being a part of their lives. You know, I would be devastated. If I feel just so lucky and blessed. And, you know, my kids are scattered out in so many ages and phases and I have you know, I had one in kindergarten, one in um, one in pre-K, one in kindergarten, one in high school, and one in college, all at the same time. <laughs> okay, so, I'm assuming these are all your kids. Yeah, with your husband. Yeah, that was you crazy. Know, like it is crazy. So I had like every phase of life, and now I get you know, I'm young enough, you know, where I can still go and do all the fun things and be the fun grandma and participate with them. And I love it. I just, I feel very lucky to have, to be able to do that. I think one That's of the awesome. things as I talk about, you know, not growing up with my parents as an adult, cause I I'm from Michigan. It's, I tell people I, you know, after divorce and everything, my, I, I said, I just want to go home. I want to go back to Michigan. I want something new, a different change, different everything. But, you know, okay, that was a minute. But I thought, I can't do that. Because as much as I miss not knowing my parents as an adult, I don't want, whether my kids could 
I don't know what they think. They could care less or whatever. But I want I want to know my kids as they grow up as adults, yeah. and parents, and yeah. you know things like that. I want my grandkids to know me more than just maybe once a year little visit. Yes. So. Chris and I are staying in the Pacific Northwest. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Mm -hmm. I love that. It looks like your food's almost done. Where? What stage are we in? Okay, I'm going to, I just want to see what it looked like for you, Justine. And Justine, I cannot remember. You don't have any grandkids yet, do you? I do. Yes. I'm like Amanda, I have four kids and then I have uh Two grandbabies. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> People don't even know. I'm from anymore. Jersey. So I was going to ask you, Amanda, where, what part were you from? Um, Carteret, exit 12. Oh, yeah. I'm from, I was from North Brunswick. So oh, close funny. By. Yeah, right there. I yeah. have now, like Amy, I have not lived in New Jersey, um, gosh, full time since I was like 20 years old. Me too. Wow. I'm in Florida yeah. now. I'm in Florida. And my so family yeah. is there. It's completely different. Yeah. I don't like it. I don't like Jersey. <laughs> I'll take Maine over Jersey anytime. Oh, I like Maine Florida. too. Maine is beautiful. I love Maine. I love Maine. Where do you live? In Maine? You live in Maine? Maine now? No, I lived in Skowhegan, Waterville, and I'm in Florida now. My husband brought me down here. Okay. I lived in Bath, Maine. Yeah, so it's that's so funny because it's kind of similar to... Wow. Yeah. Now, Amanda, I don't think you've made this recipe. Um, I, I think it looks great. I, I don't want, I can't tilt it that much because it's all going to spill onto it the It looks counter. amazing. But mm -hmm. it is soupy, you know. Red beans and rice soup. That's yeah, it. That's even, yeah. But the thing is- I want my if, name on it. <laughs> but even if you pour it over rice, you know, it, it, it will absorb it and stuff. But I'm going to put yeah. the rice in here because Chris suggested it. I want to see and it. Yeah, I want to see what I it really looks like with like the rice. I really to like my food. <laughs> oh, maybe you could even too, like if you wanted to next time, like if it's soupy and you don't want it soupy, you could put some like roasted diced sweet potatoes in there and give it like a little sweet and then Ooh. put a little piece of something hot in there. Ooh, she's creative. Ooh, I like do that. Do you like to cook, Amanda? I do. What is one of your favorite recipes? Um, well, my Put grandmother on my dad's side, who I was spent most of my time with growing up, was Italian. So by the time we were able to touch the stove, we were cooking. What did you like? I love making meatballs. I am known for my meatballs and I make very good meatballs. And I would love to find an amazing Italian restaurant here because I have not stumbled on one yet that I Lisa absolutely would know love. All about that. You would not find that in the state of Oregon. My grandparents were full said. Italian, Calabrese. I don't know where were your grandparents from or your your uh, Italian heritage. Where are they from? What part uh, of Italy? We're, uh, Southern Italy. Yeah. Do you know Calabria? Have you heard of that? I have heard of that. Mm -hmm. That's where my grandparents both came from and uh, immigrated in, in the early 1900s and uh, came to Portland. How the heck did they go from Very Calabria random. over the water in the boat and then train <laughs> all the way to Oregon? So uh, yeah, and in fact, I'm out of the country right now. I'm in Mexico. And anyway, <laughs> uh, <laughs> there was this cute Italian restaurant we went to a couple days ago that everyone raved that this guy settled from Italy over here to uh, Cabo. We're in Cabo San Lucas. And uh, he, uh, we had the Italian food and it was good, but you know, it's not the same as your family recipe. And like he made the meatballs and my dad, we had over a hundred year generation of Christmas Eve with our Italian family. And we always made the meatballs and they're mm. half pork, half beef, Parmesan cheese, breadcrumbs, fresh parsley, garlic. And they just like melt in your mouth. And the guy was saying like, please tell me if you, if it's different than your recipe. And I didn't have the heart to tell him, but the meatballs were so solid. You had to like almost use a knife to yeah. cut them through versus, you know, that cheese and the, and the breadcrumbs. And so, 
Yeah, we should talk sometime. That we should. You won't find it in Oregon. I'm just saying. no. I keep trying. I'm desperate. I have there is a food cart in Portland where the people are from Italy and they spend half their time there. And I keep seeing it on social media. Um, they spend half their time in Italy and half their time at this food cart that they have, and it's like rolled up pizza. Oh. It's a rolled well, up pizza cart, but they sell out super fast. But I hear all their food is absolutely to die for. Well, you know, different regions of Italy cook different. So my aunt yeah, was like a Sicilian. lot of different countries though as well. Yeah. So yeah. my aunt was from Sicily and that's a melting pot of Middle Eastern, Italian, Spanish, all sorts. So when she makes her sauce, we don't call it gravy, it's sauce. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> She uses cinnamon as a spice in her sauce and like in her meatballs and even some nutmeg and different. So we don't cook like that, but she did being from Sicily because that was a different region. So interesting. Yeah. Well, Amanda, I'm not sure if you mentioned it or not, but do you have a favorite dish you like to make? Meatballs. Oh, yes. I'm sorry. Yes. You did say that. Yes. Yes. I do love you making always put it with the tomato marinara or whatever sauce. I cook it in the sauce. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Do you brown them first and no. then put them in the sauce? I put okay. the, I drop them in right in there naked. And okay. I heard both ways. We yeah. brown them first in a little olive oil and just give it that kind of brownish crusty and then put them in and then it just like yeah, it's it's good. Yeah. Okay, but you can do it either way. Um, I know that you've made this recipe because I, I, I want to finish this up, but adding oh. the rice. Wow. Not soupy no. anymore. No. <laughs> I'm going to let this sit. Well, I would let it sit. Um, I'm going to let this cook, you know, a little bit more, but you might need a little more liquid because like anything else with pasta or rice or something like that, or even stew. You cook it, it's still runny, loosey-goosey or whatever, but you put it in the fridge, you take it out right now and you can almost- Yeah, it's just- And you absorb. might need a little more water or broth or something water. just to kind of like loosen it up. But I tell you, this- That looks delicious. Isn't soup anymore. Yeah, so maybe just say add the rice. If, if you make the rice beforehand, just well, add like, the rice to it. Like I yeah. said, there's some writings on here. I'll, I'll, I'll have to update this recipe. It looks, yeah, it looks great. I wish I we could telling, smell it. I was telling yeah. you, Amanda, you know, I was writing up so many recipes all at the same time that sometimes in your mind, you know what to do, but it didn't really get it on paper. Yeah. And so I looked at this recipe today and I'm like, oh my gosh, wait a minute, this, 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 like what? So anyway. <laughs> Part of the fun in this is that she tweaks and adds as she goes. It's not like one thing. And isn't that like our cooking? I'd say even to Laz or Justine, we add things to it and then we try it again. And, you know, it, nothing has to be exact. It's cooking, right? So mm -hmm. you can be as creative as you want. Well, with your cooking, baking, uh, you need a core to baking because that's part of the yeah. structure unless I would say like pie crust generally has to be the same at, at least proportion between whatever you use, butter, shortening or whatever, and then the flour and stuff like that. But sometimes yeah. you can do the variations on flavoring. Like um, I'm not into, I'm not a fancy baker. I, I baking the whole different world, but I love to bake, but I like cookies. I like pies. I like, I'm still trying to perfect this crazy cherry pie. Oh uh, my God. But mm -hmm. but I like you know cupcakes oh, good. I like regular cakes not these big fancy things. Mm. Um, uh, just because I love sweets, but cookies is my thing. I I will come up with any combination of cookies because that's just the way it is. You know? But what are you doing now? Well, I, I got out some new parsley. <laughs> so okay. I <laughs> but mm -hmm. I was just going to let the soup sit. But we can definitely you know wrap this up mm -hmm. if if people are ready to do that. <laughs> but um but I, I appreciate number one I appreciate y'all uh being a part of the you know cheesecake membership and being a part of this as we talked about before not everyone may be available during the weekday so we might pick a weekend event to do whether it just be a topic conversation 
or something like that, or we do another cooking thing on the weekend or whatever. Cause I know for, you know, like Justine in Florida, it is going on eight 30 her time. Yeah. Quarter after eight. And uh, that might be late for some, or maybe this is a cooking idea for doing tomorrow or the next day. I don't expect people to cook with me if they want to cook with me. Hallelujah. But I often prep a lot of my, like I already have the sausage cook. I already have the rice cook because as we all know, we're doing other things. Oh yeah. Rice, you take 20 minutes. Well, guess what? I'm going to vacuum the carpet, you know, or something. <laughs> <laughs> or chop up some other stuff. Not you, Amy. <laughs> no, not me. I'm on my computer like, what's the next recipe? Yeah. Um, but you can't do that on a, you know, on a call, on, a, on like something like this. So I usually have, you know, my stuff, some of it prepped and everything. But anyway. Yeah. So is there, because um, Justine, you know, I don't know. I didn't get the notes from Lisa at all, but um is there something else you would want to see me cook or make or come up with a recipe on? I can't remember. No, um, just so I like your simple recipes. <laughs> okay, good. Okay, simple. Like simple. Well, they're simple. They're pretty basic and they're familiar. And yeah, like I home. Think, yeah, like um, what's that? Comfort food. I love, yeah. Comfort food recipes is mine. Well, I think mm-hmm. if you're learning to cook, I think they're easy to follow and easy to do. If you like cooking or you've cooked for a long time or whatever, they're familiar enough that if there's something that I put in it that you don't want, you, you, you may know what to substitute or something like that. And because I, I'm not a trained chef, I, I've just been cooking for a long time. I just love doing it. It's, I majored in hospitality, though I did nothing professionally with it. Um, but I, I just have always enjoyed cooking. And so when I end my recipes, my recipes keep changing, but, you know, it's, it's, you know, eat, love, gather, you know, part of the theme of my uh, um, website and everything and Amy Roloff's little kitchen, because I just like that whole, it could be a piece of bread and whatever, a little olive oil and balsamic vinegar, and you got a glass of wine. To me, that's Mm. part of the atmosphere, just talking and gathering and just taking the time to be in the presence with other people and give and take in the conversation or whatever reason brings you together yeah. just, just started my um I do once a month now because of you really? <laughs> soup and salad with my girlfriends so we get yeah. together and we all bring craft stuff to do and we do soup and salad so That's awesome. um, I love that idea that you you know I love yeah, your, yeah the soups I'm yeah, interested soup in night. we call I called it yeah. soup night yeah. Because it doesn't have to be complicated. Every yeah. sometimes it takes someone to initialize to initialize is that the word um, to bring people together. Yeah, everyone's thinking about it. It's like these different pieces of the puzzle out there. But yeah, it takes one person just say, "Well, why don't we do this?" And another person, "Oh, I'll do it next month." And you know, yeah, I love that. I, I belong to this Bunko thing and I, I commend people who have been a part of Bunko and it's the same people all the time over the years. I just started going and, and some people, it's too many people have come and gone. A lot more of our substitutes are now becoming regulars, you know, all this other stuff. So we'll see how it goes. But I, I, I had to continue to work through the concept of this is the most useless game on the planet. <laughs> It's gathering together. (laughs) It's not about Bunko. Bunko is the reason to get together. Everyone brings a dish to share, an appetizer, whatever the host deemed it to be. And, and, you know, stuff like that. And so for me, it was a way to um, just meet other people in this area because you really don't understand exactly how much a show takes away that opportunity. Uh. Especially in the early years that we were doing the show. I mean, it's not like we film right now. It, it was like five days a week, all day, 10 months out of the year. I mean, it's a job. Wow. And by the time the weekends come along, you're like, I don't even wanna see anybody or talk to anyone because we gotta connect or figure out how to way to do that with the family and just do something together without you know the element uh, television. I bring that up because that was one of the reasons I joined Funko, but I still envy those people because a lot of them are friends 
they just decided to be a part of this bunker. Lisa has a lot of friends, you know, that she's because she's lived here all her life. And, you know, I meet other people and I thought, yeah, that's probably what I would have had when I was in Michigan. So I continue to struggle with that connection and feeling like, can we just start here and build upon that instead of always, and this is my part. It's not like these people make me feel that way. Instead of feeling always like the third wheel or like I'm an add-on, you know, a filler or something. Because, uh, but anyway, I, I I digressed here. Sorry about that, people. <laughs> she always goes down that is, rabbit hole. She, her personality is so much like mine. And I remember from when I first started watching the show and I'm like, oh my gosh, this woman cracks me up because she is just so much like me. My I like to say it's that Midwest. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but yeah. yeah. But, oh, but Amy, like you, Amanda, though, I, 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 I commend you because- I've heard a lot of stories from other women, wives, who husbands and have been in the military or they have been in the military or whatever and trying to raise a family. But you're all you, you move often enough that, yes, you made a connection. But now you got to move and you got to start all over. And by the time you feel like you're OK, then you got to do it again. But you know what's interesting about that that I'm very thankful for really? is yeah. because of that because that I was in that environment and I didn't have a choice that wherever that we move, like you can ask like Rachel, I, I'm friends with her. Like I can build a community like that. Yeah. I could, I'm a great gatherer of women. But you um, also have the personality for that. It sounds yeah, like. Yeah, I'm very outgoing, <laughs> yeah. but I, I love that. Like I love like connecting people and, and getting yeah. friends groups and like, you know, having girls night over at my house and that sort of thing. And I think because I've always been very outgoing and able, I've never been a stranger, could talk to people wherever, but because of being in a military environment and moving around and different areas, like, you know, you just get used to um, building your community, yeah. you know, because you have to, and you're used to people coming and going because yeah. that's the lifestyle of that, right? Yeah. So just like when come when I came here, you know, it's just it's just something that comes natural. Yeah. To me, and to so, build and, and and that is very commendable. I I mean, I almost wish I was a lot more like that. Now I say that, and people laugh in my face, like, "Well, yeah, of course you're like that." I, I said, if it wasn't really for the show, I probably would not have been like that. Because yeah. even when I moved to California and got married, I felt like I, I'm this minnow in the big ocean. I moved to Oregon. I'm pregnant with twins and we're moving to a farm. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> you know, how am I? And I think part of my reason is my own self doubt and all this other stuff back then. And it still yeah. continues to be to this day is because when you're different, and I'm talking about that extra different, whether it be intellect, your physicality, or something like that. You have, I think, little extra layers of the onion that you have to work for, work through. Yeah. Like we started playing pickleball, Chris and I. I love sports. I love doing that. But when I thought about playing pickleball. I have a general idea what pickleball means. It's similar to ping pong, tennis, God knows, you know, one of those things. But my immediate thing was, okay, I'm short. I play tennis before I know my backhand. I am level with the net. Pickleball, it's a fast, quick game. They have much longer arms. They can lob it over my head like that. I can't, so all of these elements came into my mind as to who is going to want to play pickleball with me? Will Chris want to play pickleball with me? Mm. If, if it wasn't for the show, I would have never, I, I, I could probably bet money on this. I probably what? never would have tried pickleball because of what ifs that always came into my mind. Really? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, absolutely. But I said, you know what? I can play. I said, yeah, she'll kick I'm your butt too. The opportunity <laughs> to tell me, and if they didn't want to play with me, or sometimes you can figure out people's reasons for getting out of not playing with. You. No one has done that yet. 
but just being different, unfortunately, like I said, this is my characteristic and, and, and uh, personality. It's always in the back of my mind. So a friend of mine invited me to go play pickleball with her and her husband and stuff. And she's part of a membership down and whatever. Chris couldn't go with me. He had something else going on, poker night, or I, I don't know, something else going on. And I'm like, how old am I? I was paranoid. I had anxiety about it. Oh, dude. Like, because my friend has never seen me play pickleball. No one has, none of those people has played me. And, you know, they've got a, a pro pickleball player there. They got all these other people there. And so to me, I was just praying and hoping because I said yes to it because it would have been so easy for me not to do it. But I said yes to it because to me it was like, but you can't allow that to get in your way, Amy. And yes, get yourself outside the box. And yeah. who knows how you can do I was just so excited that I was able to hold my own. But with that context, yes, I was able to hold my own. But if they were ever to become super pickleball players, I wouldn't have been able to hold my own because they would have been able to do so much more because I don't have the arm length. Yeah. I cannot necessarily. There's so much more thinking I have to do and how I just tilt the paddle instead of just say so anyway the whole point being is sometimes you have to know yourself you have to know your characteristics and you have to know your personality because that in itself can get in your way of you just being the best that you can be mm -hmm. or yeah. trying new things or getting to know new people and everything like that like one of the things I, I've said this before is like I don't like crowds I don't like yeah. crowds at all because those that know me don't even think about it. And I'm like, oh, bless your heart. I'm so glad. But when you think about a crowd of people, especially brand new people, everyone's up here talking. Mm. It is not natural for these people up here to look down and talk to someone. Because when they're up here and they look down to talk with someone, guess who that someone is? It's a child. Yeah. Oh. And so to me, it's like, man, if I <clears throat> and say something, I better have one hell of a good thing to say because it is easy to tune out because everyone is out here. Think about when you're dating or in high school and stuff like that. You know, you may be talking to someone, but your eyes can see here, here, or here. But if they look down, that's all they see. So let <laughs> me ask you, know. Amy, so me being like that you, you're not like I'm going to like uh, to go talk to people like being that you're like a known person and like mm -hmm. when you're home and like in this area and people recognize you and that sort of thing how do you feel about that because I bumped into you a couple times well I've seen you a couple times I was like oh maybe I'll go say hi to her I mean, you know mm -hmm. but it's like you know maybe she doesn't want that because she's you know like how do you yeah. feel about people approaching you when you're well, out and about like when we um, an introverted person yeah it's like when we first did the show um, we, we, we were dumbfounded as to the popularity of the show. I, I, we're, we're like, what, you know? Yeah. And so in a lot of people's minds, it's like, oh, this must have changed so much for you and everything or whatever they said. And I thought, man, I could really be frank here or, you know, how, how do I answer this question? Because, you know, will people get it? In my mind, I think I've learned a lot more about me and what held me back growing up or in college <laughs> and all that stuff. But I think it just brought out more of me. I don't think I necessarily have changed. But when we first did the show, what I began to realize, it's you that have changed because your perception of me have changed. If the yeah. show happened, who knows what people would have thought about little people and, you know, all this other stuff, you know, mm -hmm. because there's still a certain image in people's mind about dwarfism and, you know, just like anyone of different, just anyone of any race, any physicality difference, any intellectual difference, anything. We have a preconceived, whatever it may be, whether it be experience, what we see on TV or something. So that made it a little bit more understanding because I'm like, why am I suddenly the greatest thing on the planet since sliced bread? I don't get it. 
because this isn't how y'all acted before the show. Yeah. <laughs> and but, so it took me a while to adjust to that because to your question, how do I respond to that? But unfortunately, I also still have to continually to have some sort of caution because yeah. everyone has a good reason or a motivating factor. I could go into a ton of, you know, yeah. things, but not everyone has a good um, reason for coming up to you. It's like, what do you want from me? And sometimes yeah. people have different expectations from you because you are on television. And I'm like, it's a reality show. But anyway, um, <laughs> you know, so I have to go through a different element. I'm not saying anyone else on TV has to do that. I'm just saying me, that this yeah. is all my perspective. And so I have to be, like when I first dated Chris, I'm like, what every size guy is going to want to, I had all of these images, but it always came down with, maybe it's because you're a great person, Amy, maybe yeah. you have a good personality, but I think, you know, whether you're black, whether you're Asian, whether you're different culture, whether you're, you know, different physicality, we all go through that. It's never quite thinking well of yourself as being the reason of a good personality. It's like, well, it's probably this, or it's probably that, or it's probably this, or it's probably that. And then when Chris said, oh, I never watched the show. And I'm like, okay, is this guy BSing me or what? What do you mean? Do you believe people when they say that to you, like other, other than Chris, but when you see people, when you meet people out in town and they came up to you or you start talking to them and they say, oh, I've never seen the show. Do you believe I hadn't that seen the true? show. I you hadn't seen what? the show when I, I met I think to, to your really? question, Amanda, I think a lot of times, um, but we weren't on very long though, Lisa, when I first met you. 2009 is when I met like you. 2008 and then 2009, but we were maybe two seasons, two full years in, but it, it was yeah. to the height. It, it was a height of the show. Tell you the truth, Amanda, Amanda, if I am able to engage a little bit longer in a conversation with them, I'll, I'll, I'll usually make a guess as to whether they're BSing me. Yeah. Or if it's really true, maybe they saw a show here or there, but they can't remember or relate to it. So yeah. there's a lot of people yeah. I, I get um, and believe, you know, Chris, I totally believed if, yeah, yeah. He, well, now when I see you around town, I'm going to come up to you and talk to you. He's well, very approachable. She you can tell me how to play pickleball because I got paddles a year ago and I haven't played yet because I don't know oh. how. <laughs> Let's play. It's, let's play I, let's do it chris and i love the game i mean you know we're, we're not retired yet so it's not like we're playing every other day or something yeah. like that and on the west side here like hillsboro you know maybe parts of beaverton or something like that it's There's courts I, everywhere I me and my husband play. wanted to try it we don't have anybody to play with and neither of us know how to play we've got a net chris and i'll play with you Let's do it, Amy. Yeah, we have Let's some other friends in Hillsboro that will um, that we play with, good friends and everything. They're a hoot. Um, but no, it's 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 a fun game. Yeah, we have a net, so yeah, we'll 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 set up some. Yeah. Time. I think the biggest thing for out west, uh, not west, um, <coughs> west side, is that there's really no indoor. Forest course. Grove has one now on Facebook. There's a Forest Grove pickleball group on Facebook. Well, there's one um, in Hillsboro too, but we have a yeah. place called Hidden Creek. They do it a couple nights a week. They do it. It's like yeah. five dollars to play to help pay for the well, space. What kind of and facility is it in? It's in like an auditorium, so it's like it's set up for pickleball now, and it's like I, all I, different ages of people. Well, in Clackamas, they have a whole yeah. building. It looks like a warehouse building. Oh yeah, wow! Off of two to five. Specifically, specifically, there's no tennis courts that they're turning into pickleball. There's no open gymnasium that they're, you know, they have to take up the tape or however they set it up. And yeah. you can play basketball. This is specifically for pickleball. They have like nine courts. Oh, wow, nine I didn't know that. Courts or something. And well, I just we did can... that they had something on the West side like that. Like Washington County Fairgrounds out here in Hillsboro here, they have this whole tennis court. Yeah, and it's useless. The tennis courts is useless there because there's cracks in there. There's weeds growing up. 
But I'm like, Parks and Rec or Washington County, who 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 owns it? Th th this is like the biggest thing on the planet suddenly. Yeah. You know, I'm in the Northwest, and I do not understand why you have not transformed this place. You don't have to make it enclosed. Just put an awning over it so at least people can play during the rain. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what we can do is, uh, and we did this on the last call, I think Justine uh, had, sh we were sharing recipes and stuff. If you want to email me at arlittlekitchen at gmail.com. Look at your contacts. We can all, we'll send you the updated recipe uh, that um, Amy's going to either make this rice and beans or rice and bean soup mm -hmm. uh, with the update. And then you guys can communicate and set that up. I know Amy yeah, has kind of a time frame going on here. So I'm trying to put the soup in here. Yeah. Because we're going to pretend like this is a cooking show. I got to put the soup in it. <laughs> it's soup. Oh, what? Wait a minute. Soup? What is no <laughs> soup? <laughs> rice and beans. Yeah. He has to taste it on, on camera. It has to, yeah. that'll make the last portion of it, make it look yummy. I know you can't really see it there, but. Looks that good. looks delicious. Look at but that. Of course, I can't even take a bite because it's so dang hot. Well, blow on it. But, um, but Justine, one of the things I'll change on this recipe and anyone else out there is that, um, I add the rice to it. It absorbs some of the liquid. And I think, like I said, I had this part of the recipe. I was I was debating whether to write the recipe up like that. I had this side over. Do I write the recipe out that? So I kind of took elements of both. But because of the liquid in here, the one little part I forgot to mention is you don't have to cook the rice in it, but you can add the rice to it. Yeah. And that helps yeah. absorb a lot of that liquid, you know? Mm. And so yeah. this is where you put a little bit of the parsley on it. Mm. Gotta decorate it a little bit. Get a spoon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so Laz, do you think you'll try and make the recipe? Yeah, probably. It depends if you like beans and rice or, um, if you want to put in, you know, some of the sliced uh, sausage type of thing. Th to me, this is a great vegetarian dish. I use chicken broth, but you can use vegetable broth. You don't have to add in the pork sausage if you don't want. I made like a red curry soup when I was in Michigan for my dad and family. And my sister and I don't know, someone else maybe uh, were vegetarians or whatever but I cook chicken breast separately because, you know, some people like protein. Um, <laughs> but, you know, this is an easy dish to make vegetarian as well. You know? mm. So, yeah. Okay, let's see that. Bye. Really, Lisa. Yes. Oh, Don't we all want to see her try it? Yeah. As I, as I dribble food down my chin or God knows what. Blow on it. Poof it. You I always say poof it. Talk. Mm. <laughs> ah. Of course, man. No, I like it. <laughs> no, I do. I'm I, I like sure it, it looks delicious. Mm -hmm. I might change a little bit on the um the uh, seasonings, a half a teaspoon of smoked paprika, that might be okay because I, I don't want it too smoky. See, I, I added more because I like paprika. One, yeah, one teaspoon of oregano. Maybe mm. two teaspoons or something. Oh, do you, did you want some, babe? Oh yeah, Chris is going to be here. Okay. He's starving. Go on. He's starving and he's the truth. He'll tell you the truth. So, <laughs> all right, we want to hear the truth. Okay, Chris, you have to tell the truth. Uh, this, is the big, this is the big tester here. Uh, what do you mean by <laughs> no? I meant, you know, like this is very important to me. This is like a big thing, <laughs> but it's hot. Be careful, it's hot. Don't call it soup. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We 
we got to tell Daisy to stay down because whenever we're together, you know, she wants to jump up and like be part of the party. Oh yeah. <laughs> Lucy does too. I like it. Do you like it? Ooh. Flavors going on. Yeah. yeah. Not, not too hot, but it does have some heat to it, but not too hot. Not for me anyway. He yeah. would probably add a little more hot sauce or something like that. No, I don't think I would add more. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Because I added a little, the only hot sauce. Oh, he's having a second bite. I know. Mm. When, when he goes back <laughs> for seconds, that's like, like for all of us who cook for our uh Oh, family. going for the third. Okay. He goes back for seconds. We're like, hallelujah. Mm. You know? But, okay, can I just take this away while you yes. finish up? Yes, yes go yes, for it. Aw, Chris. <laughs> I think the only hot thing that I really add on, oh, I did add a splash of uh, cayenne pepper. Oh. And just a few red pepper flakes. So I did go ahead and add both. But anyway. Very good. Well, you guys, thank you so much for... Being a part of the cheese, isn't that kind of cute? I have a, a cupcake, pancake, and cheesecake membership. I think it's so fun. <laughs> um, thank you for being a part of the cheesecake membership. You know, as, as we keep going on, you know, we'll keep building upon what to offer you guys. But we're I'm definitely open for suggestions or ideas. I'd like just to have a chit chat and have like a, a theme title or topic. Uh, one of the things we were talking about was thank you notes, thank you letters. And we'll get into a conversation about that and, you know, what we do and, you know, stuff or how, what's happening now or today with all the technology stuff. But anyway, um, so yeah, just feel free to let me know your input, your thoughts and stuff like that. And I don't know, I, I hope you continue to be, you know, a member, but anyway. Yeah, we'll see you next time. All right, guys. Bye. So, uh, last, Thank you. all the best to you on what you're doing. Justine, I'll uh, get a hold of you because I missed Monday. I was out of town. I, I don't know. You had something oh. going on. But I'll have to. Yeah, we'll one. figure. We'll get a date. Amanda, maybe we'll get together, have coffee or something like that. Yeah. We're and anyone else out there uh, that have shown, that have just done uh, voice but no video, let me know your input. All right. Have a Bye. Good day. Bye.